What is tagging? A frequent question asked by all the medical graduate upon starting their first posting when they are house officers. In this video, we'll be talking everything about it. Let's dive right into it. Assalamu alaikum and hello guys. This is Dr. Ilyas, a medical officer, double MRCS holder and aspiring ENT surgeon to be. Welcome to another video in Housemanship Survival Series. In this video, we'll be talking about tagging. I've divided this video into three categories. What is tagging? How the timings looks like? And how each individual departments carry out their off tag assessment? Number two, how to prepare yourself for this tagging? Number three, sharpening your knowledge. First part, what is tagging? When you start off with each and every postings, you will start off with tagging first. This is basically to familiarize yourself with the general workflow of the respective department. The timing is usually from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. The tagging duration would be one to two weeks, but could be longer for the first posters. Of course, most of the hospitals follow the system. However, like I've always mentioned before, in medicine, there is no one size fits all. Each and every single department, even among the same hospitals, carry out their tagging differently. The rules and regulation might change. So make sure to talk to your senior houseman to know what is the exact timings and rules and regulations. Most of the time, you will have an off tag assessment. And this will be usually carried out by the medical officers. It could be an MCQ, a written or a verbal Q&A. Specific department has more requirements on top of the verbal assessment. For example, if you take on obstetric gynecology, you need to conduct a certain number of deliveries with epistemic repairs and also assisting a number of caesarean sections before you can off tag. In pediatrics, you need to do a certain number of standby for caesarean section for resuscitation of newborns. And also you need to take neonatal resuscitation program. For medical department, you need to do a certain number of procedures on top of clocking certain number of new cases per day. For surgical rotations like general surgery, orthopedics and obstetric gynecology, you need to go for your hospital, you need to go for your operation theater orientation which usually will be done by the OT sister or staff nurses. Of course, for orthopedics, you need to know how to apply plaster of Paris and assisting certain number of operations. Part B, how to prepare for tagging. Number one, start off with knowing all the location respective to your department. Usually during the hospital orientation, right after PTM, you will get to know which department you are going through. The moment you get to know which department, make sure to find out all the locations that you need to know with respect to your department. For example, if you're in general surgery, make sure to know where is the general operation theater, where is their intensive care unit, ICU, where is the high dependency unit, HDW, where is the specific location of each and every single lab, serology lab, for example, microbiology lab, hematology lab, where, you, where would you go and take blood for blood transfusion? Where would you send your arterial blood gases for investigation? Where would you send your histopathology for investigation and where to trace it? So make sure to know all this. Make sure to know the location of a general clinics if you are posted there. Make sure to know your all your wards, your male, your female ward, your isolation wards. Make sure to know all these locations before you even go to your posting. You need to get familiarized yourself with how to trace investigation. First of all, make sure to know whether your hospital uses manual system or electronic systems. If it uses electronic systems, how to register yourself for the e-system? Usually, they will tell you all this during the orientation, but no harm asking your fellow seniors for help and how to navigate the system so that you can print out the results to trace the results. If it is manual, what are the numbers to call? When I was a house officer in Hospital Epo, what I used to do is we have all the hospital phone numbers printed out in a small paper and usually we'll put it behind the name tag. So it's very easy. We can just look through the number and straight away make a call to trace the investigation. You can do this or you can just simply call the operator to get the extension number. Now that we've done with locations, number two is documentation. Documentation starts with reviewing patient. The reviewing is a huge topic by itself. 
that I'll be making a separate video talking about what is the difference between daily review, post-op review, transfer in review, daycare review, oncology review, and etc. So make sure to keep watching for that video. Make sure you familiarize with all kind of forms, starting with observation charts, input output chart, the glucose monitoring chart, GCS chart, then moving on to discharge letter, discharge note, letter to clinic kesihatan, memo to other agencies, referral letters, letter to social welfare, radiological investigation, blood consent, consent for operation, the list goes on and on. Make sure to familiarize with all these forms before or during your tagging. Part 3. Sharpen your knowledge. I hope you still have your medical books with you because you really need it. So, the moment you get to know your respective department, make sure to know all the common diseases for that respective departments and read their clinical practice guidelines. Know how to handle the medical emergencies or surgical emergencies. Know how to recognize them, what are the clinical signs and symptoms. Because remember, you are the one who are going to pick up these subtle clinical signs and symptoms and report it to your medical officer or specialist so that the appropriate treatment can be given to patients at the right time. Look through clinical practice guidelines and national antibiotic guidelines. If you are in pediatrics, make sure you know how to calculate for the maintenance and deficit for fluid resuscitation. In general, you need to know how to calculate for sodium and potassium deficit and correction. What is the formula for serum osmolarity? What, how to calculate the corrected calcium levels? Dosage of commonly used medications. So make sure to go back to your medical books or download Blue Book application in your Android devices or Apple devices. This Blue Book has all the drug formulary available in Ministry of Health Malaysian hospitals. Polish your procedural skills. Go back to your OSCE books and watch some OSCE videos in YouTube. Because as a house officer, these are your bread and butter. You'll be doing these procedures day in and day out, starting from taking blood, setting branula, taking blood gases, taking a blood culture, and also getting a continuous bladder drainage. So make sure to know everything in and out about these procedures. There are some subtle but very important steps in these procedures which are very often overlooked by house officers. For example, after you take your blood, make sure to shake the blood container according to its recommendation. Because if you don't, the blood is going to be clotted, then your samples might be rejected, then you need to take again, then you need to do more work. It adds burdens for you and also to the patient because the patient needs to get poked again. Another example is when you take blood gases, whether arterial blood gas or venous blood gas, make sure to heparinize the syringe first and also transport it together with ice. These are the steps to prevent it from clotting and do blood cultures and procedures in a strict aseptic method. Guys, follow the standard of precautions. Don't use shortcuts. If your fellow house officers or senior house officers teach you the shortcuts, you remind them or you correct it and don't use shortcuts. Please make sure to bring along the blood taking trolleys with you. Make sure to have the sharp disposable and dispose it correctly. Do not recap the needle. Dispose the sharps accordingly. Please don't use shortcuts. Me, getting hepatitis or retroviral disease just because you want to save few minutes of your working time by not wearing gloves or recapping the needle is not worth it. On top of the three things that I mentioned, I have some bonus for you guys. My personal tips for tagging. Don't be shy or scared to ask questions to your fellow house officers. If they don't know, ask your medical officers. If they don't know, ask your specialist. If they don't know, ask your consultants. Please don't be afraid or shy. This is your time to learn. And don't worry if you, if you don't know how to manage or you don't know how to do a lot of procedures in the start. Remember, every great doctor started as you. Even the best surgeon in the world started as an assistant first. Bring water and food with you during your tagging. Food such as energy bars, some fruits or biscuits so that you can just grab and go. Be humble yet hungry for knowledge. Always volunteer yourself to do procedures. Of course, you should read how to do it first. Don't rush to off tag. Ask yourself these questions. Can I on call alone in this ward? Can my medical officer or specialist trust me to manage this ward? 
The key word here is, am I a safe houseman? If the answer is yes, then you're ready. Number five, start your day fresh. Forget all the negatives that happened the day before. Number six, never, remember guys, never ever take whatever your medical officers or specialists or consultant say things personally because you don't know what kind of situation they are in, what they are going through. Forget and forgive, not for the benefit of others, but the benefit of your mental health. Remember guys, don't ever take things personally, regardless of whatever the medical officers or specialists say to you. Majority of them do not mean to attack you personally. When you reach your home, as you're taking out your shoes, leave every negative things that happen in your workplace outside the house. And when you enter your house, spend quality time with your family members, have a good rest and recharge and good to go the next day. In summary, before start tagging, make sure you talk to your fellow senior houseman to know exactly how the tagging system works for your respective department. Number two, make sure to know all the wards and clinics and ICUs and all location of the ward respective to your departments. Then familiarize yourself with the documentations and the forms. Number three, sharpen your knowledge and polish your procedural skills. Finally, don't take things personally. Start your day fresh and before you off tag, ask yourself, am I a safe houseman? Hopefully this video helps you in your tagging. If you find it helpful, share it with your friends. Like the video. See you guys in my next video where I'll be talking everything about reviewing patients. <music>